hearty welcome and happy hump day to one and all. This is episode 166 of the Confessions of a Not-So-Dangerous Mind podcast. I'd like to thank you all for spending some of your early Wednesday evening here with me in New York. If you check out this episode on the YouTube channel, haven't done so already, please click like, subscribe, comment, share, turn on those notifications. Or if you can catch up this episode on the audio platform, such as Spotify or iTunes, same general rule applies. Click like, subscribe, share, turn on those notifications. Something I was pondering earlier today is what the phrase home gym means. Now there's the obvious explanation, and then there's a level two, level three, and rabbit hole definition because home gym can mean an awful lot of different things. Now, I know for myself, I never seriously considered getting a home gym. Once I joined Bev's in 1993 as a 19 year old, there really wasn't any reason to have anything at home. Even on the rare occasions where there was a weather issue, you know, I couldn't make the gym because of a snowstorm or a hurricane, or something like that, or a kind of an unexpected event would take place where maybe if I had something at home, I could, I could do an hour, but I wouldn't have time for a you know 40 minute round trip. Through all the years, despite moments where there were days where I couldn't get there, damn it, I wish I had something. I never seriously was gonna take the plunge and make purchases. And then, COVID happened, and I guess you could say that my hand was forced. Now, there were plenty of people who were aggravated and, in some cases, uptight, scared, nervous. Nobody really knew what was going to happen. But I immediately ordered stuff right off the bat. I ordered a lightweight elliptical. I ordered kind of shitty adjustable dumbbells. $75. They went from like five to 22 and a half and a, a decent adjustable bench. Now, when you say home gym, that's level one. That's level one. And so what I was thinking about earlier today, if your goal is to have as your primary gym, a commercial gym, such as Bev's Gym, or for other Long Islanders, whether it's ProFit Deer Park, Onyx, Unique Fitness in Holbrook, for example, if your average everyday workout, your goal is to have it take place in a gym such as the ones I just mentioned, or it could be Planet Fitness, it doesn't really matter where you go, this is a con conceptual thing. If that's your goal, then you don't need to spend very much money. I would argue if what I just said is what you want to do every day or almost every day, excepting the rare times where you can't go to the gym because of the time pressure and it's, okay, I've got an hour and thank goodness I have stuff here. If that's your process, you don't need to go past level one. You simply need some kind of, again, if you could have a chinning bar or whatever, you could do that. But you need some even really super light dumbbells, something to give yourself a pump if you're going to do chest, for example, you know, could do very slow reps. There's ways to work around every issue. Again, we're talking about one day here, one day there. Or it could just be that it's a day you wanted to knock off 40 minutes of cardio, hence you know, the $100 elliptical like I purchased at the beginning of COVID, which still works as if it's brand new. Single greatest purchase I have ever made from Amazon, the Sunny Health and Fitness Airwalker Elliptical, $105 all in, ordered on March 13th, 2020, arrived on March 15th. 35 pounds, easy to assemble, et cetera, et cetera. But the idea is, if you're going to only really need or plan to use a home gym once or twice a month, you don't have to go above level one. Now I understand if, for example, you're an individual who has what my mom used to call unlimited funds. If you have unlimited funds, if you're okay with the idea of dropping 
10,000, 15,000 on a home gym that you're really not going to use except on rare occasions, far be it from me. But in this instance, I'm speaking to um, somebody who has a budget and uh, maybe has a big mortgage payment, whatever it might be, where they're, they're planning out everything they're going to do. If you're only going to use it once or twice a month, if that's the plan, you don't have to spend much more than two to $300. Think about it. That elliptical was 105 all in, and you could probably get it for 95 or 100 now. The price hasn't gone up. Those kind of crappy dumbbells were 75, and the bench was 80. So you do the math. I put together a functional, temporary home setup with everything I needed for the short term for under $300. Because you think about it, and especially when you're somebody like me, I just bought a house, and you, you throw these crazy numbers around, you 10,000 for this and 20,000 for this, but at the kind of street level, for example, if your membership at a gym such as Bev's, let's say it's $500 a year. Now, that is a phenomenal deal, if you ask me, for what a gym like Bev's can provide. And in that case, that they're open so many hours, and in our other gyms like ProFit, uh, I'm not sure if ProFit is 24-7 or 24-5, but even Planet Fitness uh, advertises the 24-5 format where they'll be open you know, midnight Sunday, meaning Monday, and they'll go straight through until Friday at midnight. Point is, you're getting significant bang for the buck, regardless of which gym. You're getting tremendous uh, leverage bang for the buck. So when you think of, I'm not going to use my home gym that often, it's a fair question. It's not meant to be insulting because, as everybody knows, money doesn't grow on trees. And if you're not going to use something religiously, that if it's there, break glass in case of emergency, you're not hurting yourself. You're helping yourself to have anything, honestly, and especially something as light as that particular elliptical or others of its class that are between 30 and 40 pounds and are still sturdy. It's true they're not going to give you the same workout as a Jacob's Ladder or a gym grade pro fitness um, or pre-core or pro form or um, what's the other one? Octagon? Oh, Octane. I'm sorry. It's not going to give you the same hit. But for a day here, a day there, you work hard for 40 minutes to an hour, you're getting a good workout regardless. So, so that's level one. Now, if you're somebody who would really like to, and, and a lot of people started this during COVID and continue doing this, where they maybe had not really had anything at home, purchased equipment, and said, you know what? I'm just going to go to the gym on Saturdays and Sundays so I can schmooze with everybody. But during the week, I have less time. I'm a train commuter. Whatever the case might be, I'm going to stick to home, a home gym. I don't want to go crazy. But let's see what we can do and how much would it cost to outfit like a level two home gym. So in my case, what I considered a level two home gym, it meant an upgraded cardio, upgraded dumbbells. Those two things. Now, your two things might not be that. You might be somebody who doesn't really do cardio very much or prefers to do walking outside or you have like a, some kind of other sort of cardio at home that you can do. But for, the, for somebody like myself and a lot of other people, I upgraded from the lightweight elliptical, which I then took to my father's house. I upgraded to uh, a cross between a stair climber and an elliptical. And it didn't last as long as I would have liked, but it was a great machine while it lasted. It gave a really brutal cardio hit. And it seemed as if it was going to be sturdy, but it wasn't. Where I got lucky was the thing crapped out after two and a half months. And Amazon honored the fact that they advertised, at least on this model at this time, 90 days, no questions asked. You send it back. We credit your account for the same amount. No harm, no foul, no hard feelings. Words to that effect. So this machine, which I thought was unbelievable, crapped out at about the 75-day mark. Well, I was pissed off. Because it seemed sturdy and then flywheel broke. So I, I got another one. The point is that machine was 275. I bought adjustable dumbbells 
that ranged from five to 52 and a half. Now, still not what many of us can handle, but at least now, even if you're somebody that can comfortably use 80s or 90s, for example, on a dumbbell bench press, 52 and a half is still going to be something of a challenge if you slow down the cadence. And, you know, for shoulders, same thing. But now you're talking about more money. Now you're saying, okay, $400 for dumbbells. That's more than you your entire outlay for the shitty sand-filled dumbbells, the first piece for cardio and the bench. It's 275 for the elliptical, 400 for the dumbbells. And I got myself another bench. So now you're up to $800. So that's, but that's level two. Again, you ask yourself the question, do I want to spend almost twice what my yearly gym membership is? Am I really going to use this? Or is this just going to be a conversation piece when people come over and maybe once a month I'm going to turn to it? I don't know. Only you can answer that. In my case, I knew it was just going to, it was going to up the intensity of what I was doing at home because from March until the end of June, uh, I just didn't have enough weight. You know, I, I doing crazy shit. If some people probably remember if they know me well enough, you remember me from Bev's, I used to do real high reps. So I'm sitting there with these sand filled 22 and a half pound dumbbells doing like dumbbell bench presses for 150 or 175 reps. What are you going to do? You make do with what you got. And the same with the cardio. I wanted more. I also, as dumb as this sounds, I wanted a cardio machine where I could actually have my phone in front of me and or tablet in case I wanted to watch a movie or you know whatever it was because also people who know me know I do a shit ton of cardio. So level one was about 275, 280. Level two, now we're up to 800. Now I didn't join any gyms until... Oddly enough, 2023, I went to gyms when I was on vacation. I visited my mom several times um, through 2023, and I usually went to 24-hour uh, fitness. Um, it used to be called Shack Sport. It's one of those um, one of those gyms. I think it's just called 24-hour fitness. But but either way, it's it's not really even 24. They advertise 24/7. It's not. It's not, they're full of shit. Uh, but I would go there for a week here, a week there, but I didn't join any other gyms. So in my case, if you have the money, it's different to say, okay, here's what I'm willing to spend. Because I, I have a friend, and this is why I, I urge you to think this through. He was freaking out worse than me when, uh, not just Bev's, but when all of the gyms shut down. And he said, you know, what are, what are you doing? And I told him, this is like March 16th, whenever the day was, um, I already ordered stuff and I told him what I got. And he's like, okay, well, at least we know we can get it. He said, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to buy like real gym level equipment. So he bought a life fitness treadmill, the same model that we had at Bev's gyms, probably 7,000, some crazy amount. He bought the most expensive adjustable dumbbells he could find. He bought the sturdiest adjustable bench, again, a gym quality commercial grade adjustable bench with these dumbbells. And then he bought a couple of other pieces. He's told me he spent at least $12,000 and he had, you know, had a basement. So he had it all set up down there. The guys came in and did, he was okay paying extra. And he thanked me, you know, you gave me so many great ideas. You, you, you motivated me to do this. I was freaking out. I forgot because I've never ordered any exercise equipment back and forth, back and forth. So we were talking on the phone every day through March when he completed his home gym. Hey, let me know if you want to come over and work out. Oh, sure. Then he disappeared. Didn't answer text messages. He just, in the immortal words of Warden Norton and Shawshank Redemption, man up and vanished like a fart in the wind. He just disappeared. So when I reached level two, my $800 outlay, oh, and I should point out that I, I sold the first bench. Uh, I didn't sell the dumbbells. Nobody really wanted the sand filled dumbbells. There's, they still exist somewhere out there in the universe. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's okay to make 50 bucks. 
if you're going to spend a hundred on something, that there's no crime in it. You're you're perfectly okay. It's not that you're being chintzy or nickel and diming. You don't need it anymore. So you defray the other cost. So right around the time that I completed phase two, and I was excited because the cardio was turbocharged. It was easier for me to use my phone and manipulate in case, for example, a phone rang. Oh, it's right here. We just no problem. So sometime early July 2020, this guy calls me up. And we talk for about 10 minutes. We don't mention the gym. I've moved to Florida. I'm doing great. I'm in Vero Beach. I see your old training partner down here, back and forth, back and forth. Then there's a pause in the conversation. And he says, got to tell you something, Jer. Are you sick? Are you, are you okay? He says, no, 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 nothing like that. All that stuff that I bought, the $12,000, it was probably more that I laid out for the home gym. Yeah. I never use it. I got it here with me in Florida. I never use it. Well, are you going to the gym? So I haven't opened it yet. That's what I worry. Just paying for something. If you don't, if you don't think that you have the motivation or if you're going to need somebody to motivate you. So this is where trainers are good. Even somebody that you would be communicating with via Zoom. If you need, if you're the kind of person who does really want to work out, but lacks that 100% guaranteed I'm working out today level of being able to motivate yourself. Better to hire someone else than not work out at all. That is a lot of money to not use. I don't care who you are. That is a lot of money. 12, 13 grand. It's a lot. So eventually, I continued to make adjustments. I swapped out one pair of adjustable dumbbells for a slightly better model that went from 11 pounds to 71 and a half. And I got um, cast iron 80 pound dumbbells. I upgraded the cardio again to a $600 machine, which was really amazing for $600. It was almost gym quality. It was 16 levels, uh, very, very smooth, made hardly any noise. It lasted almost a year. Uh, I can't even imagine how many hours I put on it. I got at least three years of normal use, if not four or five years of normal use out of it before. Stop me if you heard this before. Flywheel meltdown. The flywheel snapped. Done. And obviously it was past the warranty. But I felt that was money well spent. But put it through the mental meat grinder. If your yearly gym membership is $400, $500, Planet Fitness, $10 a month. Ask yourself the question. Not like Dirty Harry, you got to ask yourself a question. Do I feel lucky? Do you think that spending as much as $600 on a piece of cardio equipment, is that a good purchase? Only you can answer that. Because we've seen, um, like Bowflex makes commercial level cardio equipment for two, three thousand bucks. And for example, Octane Fitness here uh, at the clubhouse, which I use every morning, it's seven, eight thousand dollars if you want to buy it for your home gym. And I know some people don't have to sweat that, but man, that's a lot of fucking money, especially because a five hundred dollar model could probably give you the same workout. Might not have the same predicted reliability, but sometimes it's a matter of how skilled are you in the construction? I feel like I didn't do a great job putting those machines together and a home run hitter like my late great grandfather who made airplane parts by hand at Grumman 90 years ago, Grandpa Nat probably would have been able to put those machines together as well as they could possibly be put together given the rudimentary tools with which we worked. He would have built it to last. I built it to last for a while, but not, not as well as somebody who actually is good at constructing things. But these are really important, the real, really important things to ponder. The final phase for me, because I didn't have anything past phase three, but the phase three home gym was two pieces for cardio. I had my dad, what became my father's uh, lightweight elliptical that I was saying I bought in March, March 13th of 2020. Can't even imagine how many hours have been put on that. I have a $600 elliptical here. It's not set up. I just have the light one set up. So a $600 elliptical, 
which is very good, by the way. It's also a kind of a cross between a Stairmaster and uh, an elliptical. It's a really cool motion, I think. Uh, I have a trap bar and 260 pounds worth of bumper plates. So you calculate the math. The trap bar is about 150 and the bumper plates, all of that shit costs somewhere between two and 300. Adjustable dumbbells were 400. Bench was 100. You're in for a good amount of money here. To give you what should be an almost accurate tally, I think I got that particular cardio machine for five. So 500 plus 100 cardio, 600. Oh, mini stepper. In case you go on vacation, don't want to go to a gym, or mini stepper is a fucking great purchase. Can't believe how intense that workout can be, especially if you get the stepper where you can adjust the height. You'll be sweating in no time. Another great purchase. Okay, so we'll call that 75. So you got 675 to $700 for cardio, okay? The adjustable dumbbells, 400. We're up to 1100. The bench, 1200, right? The um, trap bar, the one I got was 150, 1350. Now, all the plates, I think the plates were probably about $350. So I can't give you an exact count. We're under 2000 But realistically, because I don't remember the prices for everything, you're talking sixteen to eighteen hundred dollars for what I just said. That's what I have in the basement here right now. Sixteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars. Now, the clubhouse gym is pretty good. The cardio is top notch. They've got uh, commercial level uh, bike, as I say, the elliptical by Octane Fitness, which is fucking amazing, and a treadmill, which is like a ten thousand dollar treadmill. Dumbbells only go up to sixty. I bought the sixties. They had actually only went up to fifty. I decided to be a real sport. And for Christmas, I bought the clubhouse gym, a pair of 60 pound dumbbells. But when you get into a level of, let's just say $1,500 to $2,000 for a home gym, significant outlay. Are you really going to use it? Is it necessary? Now, I got to the level of $1,600 ish about two years ago. So, what I call level two. I had level two stuff for almost a year and a half. And then I said, fuck this. I need a trap bar and I need some plates. Even though I was in a second story apartment in a 130 year old building in Huntington Village where the floor was warped. You try doing even trap bar deadlifts on a floor where the bar just doesn't stop moving around because it's tilted to one side in almost every direction. You're hunting for a spot on the floor where the where it's not rolling around, where it's actually steady. Not so easy to do. Made the exercise more challenging. Probably increased the chance for injury. I'm lucky I didn't cripple myself there, but I didn't. But the point in this instance is that outlay of money, which is not insignificant, was worth it because I did not belong to any gyms. So for the full year, from let's say April of 2022, I got the I think I got the trap bar in April of 2022. So for the year between then and when I packed up the apartment and took all the shit to my father's, in advance of you know getting ready to move over here, um, I got a year's worth of use out of all that stuff. Now some people would say that's not enough. You probably shouldn't have bought that $500 elliptical. You didn't really need it long term. Yes, I agree. But I don't regret it. I did what I felt I had to do. And I did use all of that equipment every day. But I didn't use the weights every day. But you know what I'm saying. In most cases, spending 15 grand, 20 grand on a home gym, in most cases, I believe it's overkill. Unless you have the money for it, then it's not on me to say, don't do it. But if you're a a normal person with normal bills, and not, you know, a couple of million in the bank. If you're not going to make it your primary gym, if you're going to have multiple gym memberships, I mean, it can be a flex if you want it to be a flex. Because I I have a cousin who has an unbelievable home gym. He has workout equipment like almost all over his house. It's cool as fuck. 
That's different. He's not really doing it to flex. He's doing it for health building purposes. I don't think he's ever belonged to a gym and he, he has the money. Totally different. And, but he's not, he's not being frivolous with it. Everything gets used multiple times a week. It's not like, hey, check out my basement and I never use it. Now, I know plenty of people who had incredible home gyms five years ago. And they, it's just something they wanted to do. Some people are collectors. And hey, if, you're, if you've advanced far enough in life where you can simply put together a kick-ass, expensive home gym and it doesn't hurt you, but if that's what you want to do, by all means, because you never know when something's going to happen where you're going to go through a stretch in life where you don't have time for a regular gym, it's great to have it. But the idea is it's great to have anything. Because the first terrible couple of months, you know, let's say from March through May of 2020, knowing that I had it there, waking up every morning, and I used to wake up at 3.25 a.m. Monday to Friday and 5.15 Saturdays and Sundays, waking up whenever the fuck I wanted. It was still usually before six. Make some coffee, you know, a little iced coffee, set it next to the cardio machine. It was a saving Grace, it kept me from completely losing my shit. And I, I, this is where I don't take shots at anybody else because I had a lot of friends and acquaintances, you know, I was told of that so-and-so is completely, they're, they're just they're losing their fucking mind. They're completely bonkers. So it kept me sane. It kept me balanced. And it kept me feeling like I was achieving something, even if you're not, you're not getting stronger using 22-pound dumbbells. But at least if your goal is to maintain a certain level of fitness, when you're more sedentary, for example, than you ordinarily would, anything is good. Anything is better than nothing, but anything works. It's like the old saying, nothing works all of the time, but something, what is it? Um, you know what? It's, it's ridiculous. I can't remember the saying, but nothing works all of the time is the idea. The takeaway is, you have to mix things up. As I did, upgrading, upgrading, remodeling, thinking of different concepts, sell one to get another. It's like trading baseball cards. You know, make certain sales and then make certain purchases, just like anything else. But it is important. I believe that every devoted workout trainee should have something at home. That's a hill that I'm willing to, I'm willing to debate and I'm willing to argue with because it's so, you have such a helpless feeling and it happens to us all where you think your day, for example, a Saturday, a Sunday, you think it's going to be one thing and in the 11th hour, it's going to, it turns into something else and you really wanted to work out and you don't have time. You could wake up at 5 a.m., and you would have maybe an hour, maybe 75 minutes if you're pushing it. It doesn't make sense to make, as I say, a 40 minute round trip. If you know you have whatever it is, whether it's in a basement or whether it's in a game room, it doesn't matter. I'm telling you this, the best part other than having it is the comfort of knowing you have it. It's something that can't be, it can't really be explained until you wake up and you're like, Hey, it's okay that my day just seemingly got cocked up because I'm good. I don't have to get into the car and try to blow traffic lights so that I can get in my 40 minutes. I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to do it right here. The convenience factor. That's really the best thing about it. It's so obvious, but it's what it is. The convenience factor the fun of not having to travel anywhere, of literally rolling out of bed no matter how crappy you look. You can work out in pajamas and a torn t-shirt. Nobody cares. It's just you and the iron, whether the iron is actual weights or the cardio machine. Is it in you? Are you motivated? Can you motivate yourself or do you need an audience of a gym? Hey, not everybody has the ability to reach that level. It's, I guess, not something that can really be taught but most people I know who take this as seriously as I do or more seriously, they have that ability to 
never leave anything on the table. If they say, I'm going to do nine, a 90 minute sprint on the stationary bike, that's exactly what they do. So you you know your level of motivation. Do you need assistance? Do you need a lot of equipment? Do you just need functional? Level one, level two, level three. As I say, I never got to level four. Level four are the people I know who have 15 plus thousand dollar home gyms. I never got to that. And honestly, for myself, I don't think that I ever would, especially because I'm here for the foreseeable future. And they probably sank about $20,000, $25,000 into that gym. So I guess that's, even though the dumbbells only go up to 60, that's my version of having an expensive home gym, even though it's not here at home. But I have access to it for whatever that's worth. But home gyms, home gyms to me are a necessity. There's no shame. You know, oh, I belong to a gym. Get something small. Something just so on those terrible days, because we're all so obsessed with this. I know, drives us crazy when shit goes wrong. The average non-workout person can't possibly understand what it's like. But just to know you have it when you need it. Break glass in case of emergency. Level one, level two, level three, or level four. People who have home gyms know exactly what I'm talking about. And many of them can tell you stories. You probably have friends, how great it is. And oh yeah, I didn't start off spending a ton. You slowly add, you slowly accumulate. And I know people, an old friend I went to school with never went back to a commercial gym. He just made continued adjustments to his own. You don't have to do that. You can be like me. You can split it up. You can do certain workouts at home, certain workouts in the gym. You can just make it, I'm going to go to the gym on Saturdays and Sundays when I have more time, get the best possible workout in a community atmosphere. It doesn't matter. This is a planet fitness kind of a thing. This is a judgment-free zone. I can just give advice and give you my opinion here. Home gyms are critical for the mind, for our mental health. I found that to be the case. Just know, yes, wake up, roll out of bed, rock and roll. This has been episode 166 of the Confessions of a Not-So-Dangerous Mind podcast. I'd like to thank you all for spending some of your Wednesday evening here with me in New York. If you check out this episode on the YouTube channel, haven't done so already, please click like, subscribe, comment, share, turn on those notifications. Or if you have checked out this episode on the audio platforms such as Spotify or iTunes, same general rule applies. Click like, subscribe, share, turn on those notifications. I'll be back with episode 167 real, real soon. Until then, bye.